And we continue our remembrance of September 11th, 19 years after the attacks on American soil. It was a day nobody who was around will soon forget. And that includes our own Russ Mitchell, who covered the events as they unfolded in New York City when he was with CBS. And Russ joins us now. Russ, it seems like no matter how long it passes, how many years pass by, it yeah. still feels very fresh. It really does. I think when I wake up on any September 11th, I think, what was I doing at this moment, you know, so many years ago? And I remember that day I was walking to the CBS Broadcast Center at 847, which was one minute after the first plane hit. And by the time it took me, what, two minutes to get from the front door to the newsroom, it was clear that this was going to be a day like no other. And of course, 902, the second plane hit, and it was just you know, chaos from there. A scary time, certainly, as you said, a time I'll never forget. I want to show you a clip now of a story that was done on September 13th, and it kind of shows the, the desperation people had to find out if their loved ones were okay, their loved ones who worked in the World Trade Center, but these people had no idea if those people were okay. It's been a very busy day here at the Manhattan Armory behind me. The mission here is for folks who have relatives who work at the World Trade Center who they haven't spoken to or seen since the disaster of two days ago to come here and file a missing persons report. Police want to match some of the names with some faces of folks who are being treated perhaps in area hospitals but who have yet to be identified. For many who came here today, it was yet another unreal, frustrating day. They began lining up early, armed with pictures, medical records, and lots of hope. We're not going to give up. Anybody. No, she's on the list. So yeah, I see somebody we're keeping that looks the hope. Like her. keeping our faith. And Jennifer oh. Laws, we were all waiting for you. After standing in line for hours, they were interviewed in private by New York police detectives and counselors. Many left photos of their loved ones on telephone poles and mailboxes, hoping someone would see them and call. Last night, I couldn't sleep. I had to go break in his apartment and uh, get the phone number call all his family from here to Africa and everybody been calling me all night last night. If anyone has any idea if they've seen him or knows where he is to call us, he's got two little babies. Two little babies. Yeah, the armory in New York was called the saddest place in New York City for a while and that went on for weeks and it, it, it is something Jay and Betsy as the weeks and months went by it didn't hit me really until about uh, I guess about a month after 9-11 um, I've been we'd all been working very hard and I was sitting in a restaurant you know by myself having dinner and it just hit me like a ton of bricks everything I had seen in that you know previous month and um, you know again it is something that I'll never forget it's something I think about in some way or another every day of my life Russ, as you think back to, the, to those days and even weeks, is there a snapshot image that either sums up the entire time for you or perhaps an image that you just can't get out of your mind? Yeah, I guess there are two. It's when it was one woman who you did not see in that story who comes later in the story came up to me and with pictures of, I believe it was her brother. Mm. And she said she hadn't seen her brother, was in, her brother in years. They had had problems. They didn't get along, but they were just starting to mend their relationship. And she wanted to make sure he, he was okay because she wanted to know that, uh, him to know that he was okay. And the second one, actually, I mean, if, in, in, in a weird sort of way, it is kind of funny. Uh, about uh, three months after 9-11, I'm driving down the street, and I think I cut a truck driver off, and he put his hand up and, and, and gave me a signal that didn't say hello, if you know what I'm talking about, yeah. that one finger thing. And I thought, we're back. New York City <laughs> is yeah. back. Everything is okay after two months of being Mayberry. Oh. Uh, but it, you know, it, New York City is incredibly resilient, as we saw then, and it's resilient now, and it, it'll, it'll come back at some point as well. Well, Russ, I remember that particular story. I remember that story that you did and watching it back then. And it's certainly one of those situations in history where everybody knows exactly where they were mm. at the exact moment that they found out. And it's been really interesting today on social media because that's the message that people are putting out. And that's the whole thing. Never forget. Yeah. Always remember this day and the heroes. You're right. And you're exactly right. No matter where you were, you were in New York, you were in Cleveland, you were in whatever, everybody knows where they were the moment they found out. It's incredible. I'm not sure in my lifetime there was ever a day, a moment, a time when we felt more like one yeah. and it came at the expense of so many and after an attack on American soil and you juxtapose that with where we are 19 years ago, I wish so many could think back to that time of unity and 
that good feeling that we got, that we banded together and overcame. Um, I, don't know, I don't know how we do that again. Uh, my hope certainly is that we can end this division and come together as one. Yeah, I agree. Russ, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it.